Hi everyone, my name is Haley. I am one of the day program specialists at Heinz Feet Farm in Huntersville, North Carolina, working with adults with traumatic brain injury. We thought it would be a good idea for me to create some online content for you to follow along as you're at home. Um, I've had the really awesome opportunity to lead the art club in Huntersville with a select few individuals who signed up and have been creating on a weekly basis. Um, but we certainly want to open it up to anyone who would like to follow along. And if you'd like to share the experience with your family or caregivers, even better. Think about the word culture. What does that mean and how does it influence our understanding of art? Uh, culture, you've heard it, means a shared experience among groups of people, whether that's language, religion, food, social habits, and various art forms. Now art, in this sense, I'm going to be exploring um, some anthropology a little bit and then more kind of visual techniques or ways of using material in a different way that you might not have used it in the past. Um, we talked early on in Art Club about some of the early beginnings. And here you see this was 10,000 BC and earlier. Our first form of language was visual representation. These are cave paintings using, they might have used burnt items, charcoal, and then um, pigments from the earth. I know around here, there's that really rich kind of clay type dirt that I wonder if could actually be used to paint with. It's kind of like an orangey color. Um, and it's really interesting to see, they didn't necessarily do this to impress anyone. Um, nowadays, we might have a tapestry like this to hang in our living room or something, but they did it kind of in their, probably in their living space as a form of early culture, which means that they were using visual images to tell uh, other groups of people, um, likely people similar to them, who might be interested in, who knows, maybe hunting, or maybe they were painting off of observation, or maybe it was a religious practice where they felt like if they painted this, that more of this type of animal would be present and that their prayers would be answered. Because um, here you can see this is kind of like a horse. You can move closer to the screen if you need to. And then this almost looks like some buffalo type creatures here. Okay, so we looked at some of the earliest um, ever artworks, cave paintings, and um, they were more representational, right? So I'm going to show you an activity that we actually already did in our club. If you've already done it, you're welcome to, uh, you know, work on another one, or this is for those who might want a kind of warm up activity for um, your drawing skills and finding shapes and color and line and all those elements of art that we talked about in art club. I will be quizzing you later on, art clubbers, on the elements of art. Um, so I like to recycle whenever possible. It makes me feel like I'm using what I have, um, which is really important during this time, especially you don't wanna be going out and getting more material. So the more that you can use from home, the better. Um, I have here a paper bag from Aldi. Shout out to Aldi. This is going to act as our cave. So I'm just going to I'm going to think about things that I have seen in nature, animals. Um, thinking yesterday I saw two deer in my backyard, so maybe I'll try to draw the deer. Um, 
And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm using again, a paper bag and you can use crayons. They work really well, especially if you start with a white crayon. I'm using these like gel crayon markers. Um, they're called mixed media gel sticks. I can show you if you ever wanna use them. They're really good for uh, easy, messy, free painting or drawing. You can use colored pencils too if you want more small, fine details. And I'm just gonna start with an outline of Started with the outline of a head and then maybe I'll fill it in. Okay, so as you can see, I'm not quite done yet, but I saw them sort of like munching on some greenery in the backyard. And I might make, you know, fill this whole thing in or I might make another one down here. You can always, if you want to hold on to this, cut it out and then paste it on a new white sheet and frame it if you want to make it more presentable and make it less of a sketch. Um, so this is similar to kind of what we did in art club um, during our lesson on cave paintings. And it's just fun way to kind of warm up for you. So a large part of our culture in the United States, and we share some of these customs, which are the practices within our culture, uh, with other Western nations are um, associated around seasons and holidays. So coming up we know is Easter, like very, very shortly. And since we don't have a lot of um, opportunity to have shared experiences, I thought I would bring a little bit of springtime and Easter to your home. Um, now there is an information sheet that might be emailed out shortly about this craft project as well. So um, you can always keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, I will show you how to make a different type of Easter egg. So what I did was, you can see this was an eggshell and I used watercolor and kind of tapped in the different hues. And then I went out and collected little uh, pieces of moss here that I can put in here and it looks almost like a little nest. So you can make a number of these and put them in a little bowl or set them along your mantel place and they make a nice kind of happy Easter springtime uh, decoration. So after you're done cracking your egg in the morning or whenever, save that piece of the shell, a good two thirds of the shell and kind of rinse it out with a little bit of soap and water. And there you have it, your, your cute little canvas um, and as you go on walks, as many of you do, I was talking with another member about going on nature walks and making observations in nature. Um, you can collect things to put in there. Now, another way that you can use this is to put maybe seedlings in here and watch them grow or have, you know, I find sometimes little pebbles. This almost looks like eggs that you could set in there. Or if you happen to have the synthetic Easter grass that you put in Easter baskets, that would make a good thing to put in here with some jelly beans, assuming that these are on hand for you. But the idea always for me is to use what you have and be creative however you can using uh, recycled material. <laughs> 